Hey everyone, this is Blanco Gamer, and I feel like playing something a little bit different on the PlayStation 1, and that's Star Wars Rebel Assault 2 The Hidden Empire, which was made by Factor 5, who would later go on to make the Rogue Squadron games. Also, I haven't played the first Rebel Assault, even though that one was on the Sega CD, but I haven't played neither this or like the first Rebel Assault on either PC or consoles back in the day. I actually got Rebel Assault 2 not too long ago, and I decided to let's play it for the hell of it, or mostly just riff on it, as you'll see later on. So anyway, because this is the second game, it's titled as Episode 2, The Hidden Empire. By destroying the Death Star, rebel forces proved themselves a serious threat to the Galactic Empire. Darth Vader, enraged by his defeat, became obsessed with the Alliance's illumination. Towards the end, the forces have scoured the galaxy for a new weapon, one Vader hope can catch the Alliance off guard and give the Empire undisputed rule of the galaxy. And now the text is getting very blurry thanks to the FMV compression and we can't read it. And normally we would pan to a planet like in the movies, but because the text was so short that even the theme couldn't, you know, be finished before it ended, we just cut to some CG graphics. Because 90s and new technology, woo! So yeah, uh, the only recollection I have of this game in particular I had before actually getting it myself was I don't know if any of you know or even remember for that most for the most part. Uh, Armic Twenty One, who is a reviewer on YouTube, he did a he call, he called it a bootleg game that games that suck, which is basically just a a camcorder impromptu review of this game. So I knew about this beforehand because of that. Speak with me. Ah, yes. Tell your men I want no slip-ups this time. The demonstration shall proceed flawlessly. Am I understood? Yes, of course, sir. They'll be ready. Good. Carry on. Yes, the Empire officers have nice shoes. Thank you for letting us know that. And during that whole sequence, we're in the point of view of those little droid things or whatever they were. What were the purpose of those little droids anyway? Were they like cleaning droids or something? Yeah, well, I don't know. So anyway, Darth Vader. The rebel fighters are in range, my lord. Sigma Squadron stands ready, awaiting your command. Very well, Admiral. Engage the rebels. With special guests, not James Earl Jones. Of course, it wouldn't be a Star Wars game if we didn't have impersonators instead of the actual actors. But believe me when I say this, the Darth Vader one in this game is actually one of the better impersonators. Copy that. Gender patrol? Doesn't seem to be anything out here. Except for dated it's CG effects. Secure. Let's take one more pass and get back to base. I hear you. And let's make it quick. I really need to go to the bathroom. Out here a second longer than necessary. What's the matter, Till? Don't tell me a hot shot pilot like you is afraid of the dry triangle. It's like the Bermuda Triangle, but in Star Wars. No. Well, I'm, I'm not saying I believe in ghost ships or anything, but you've got to admit there's been a lot of unexplained happenings in these parts for the last 40 years since the Battle of Dryden. I mean, how can so many different things? Oh shit! They have cut off sentence lasers. Uh, I lost more than your stabilizer. Huh, his death scream sounded an awful lot like a stock stormtrooper death scream. As you can see, Lord Vader, the units perform admirably. In fact, I think the whole project has proved quite impressive. Why, in a few years, what I see, Admiral Saar, is just another one of your endless tests. I will not be impressed until I have, under my command, the full power to crush the Rebel Alliance. Darth Vader is not impressed with your FMV technology. And now some good old PlayStation loading. There we go, there's the title screen. And we're just going to go to the options here and change the difficulty to easy because the harder difficulties only give you a slightly different ending and you take more damage, so fuck it. Alright, now let's actually start. And uh, you get sort of a chapter select here, and obviously since we're just booting up the game now, we'll start with the first chapter in the Bermuda Triangle, or Drayton Triangle, or whatever the f hell it calls it in this game. <laughs> 
So the first chapter, we are introduced to our main character who is named Rookie One. Yeah, how original for an FMV game. And the first mission has you piloting new B-Wings. Can't make it out, Commander. Hailing vessel, repeat your message. We read you, but you're breaking up. Repeat, this cargo vessel Corellia Star. We are from the Commander Fighters. I said I don't want fries with that. Repeat your message, Corellia. Okay, kid, stay sharp. Watch your scanners for Imperial vessels. I'm picking up a Womp Rat nest of TIE Fighters at 0, 4, 2, Mark 3. I'm Zero, acting. Wait. Copy that. Switch to attack mode. Mark 4. And so with that lovely showcase of video game acting and cinematography, we move on to blow up some TIE Fighters. Yay. So, they start you off in this view, which is third person and you move around with the D-pad and shoot with X. That's pretty much it. Oh, you can also use the L and R buttons to uh, tilt and roll. You actually have to press L or R1 twice to do the barrel rolls. But it doesn't really amount to much. So, this is pretty much the entire game. It's on rails, on an FMV rail, and you just shoot TIE Fighters. Uh, you can switch to a cockpit view here and try and get a bit better of a name, but uh, aiming on the PlayStation version is difficult because uh, for one, it's not a mouse, and second, uh, aiming in both viewpoints is is disorienting, especially when uh, when you go into cockpit view, the inverted controls of the directional D-pad change on you. Like when you're flying, it's uh, it's your standard like down go up and up to go down, I think. While in cockpit view, it's just up and you just move up and down regularly. So, yeah, it's a little disorienting, to say the least. Especially in later stages when you're forced to be in this in this in in these views. And you can't change. Which is always fun. So, you're probably wondering why I'm even playing this game since I'm acting pretty cynical towards it. Well, I am a general Star Wars fan. I figured, I, I figured I'd just get this game for the hell of it. And of course, if you know me in my other reviews of FMV games on the Sega CD, well, I know a thing or two about those types of games on this system, or at least back in the 90s anyway, of these types of games that were, you know, made in the 90s. It's interesting technology, but it hasn't aged well, and I like to make fun of it. So if you have fond memories of this game, well, you're going to have to deal with my sarcastic remarks here and there. And we just completed the first stage. And we get accuracy and bonus points. Whoop de doo. Sailor, we lost a patrol in this sector three days ago. In case you forgot what happened in the intro. I also got a funny feeling about those ties we encountered. I know, me too. There's no way they could have gotten from the freighter us so quickly. Maybe it's true what they say. Now don't start telling me any phantom fighter tales. Jeez, you farm boys will believe anything you hear. Wait, I've got a fix on an emergency distress beacon. It's on a civilian channel. It might be the Corellia. Oh no, my stabilizer! Where'd they come from? Rookie one, do you copy? Are you alright? I'm being shot down, you asshole. Oh, you're in bad shape. Yeah, I don't think velocity works like that, and I don't think B-wings can do that either. But whatever. No, not him. Good thing I didn't make much of an impact, despite going that fast, and crash landing into a planet, oh well. 
Also, if you couldn't tell from earlier, this character is pretty much like the Luke Skywalker, Mary Sue, because he's a farm boy, in case you couldn't tell. Oh look, he has his Game Boy, I had to tell him where he's going. Post Alpha, report. All's clear, sir. Nothing here but sand leeches and claw mites. Good, stay alert. So the green screen reflection is that noticeable. Uh, oh well. Ah, uh, we somehow didn't notice the orange suit rebel approaching us. Uh, and walk into another green screen room. Loading. Okay, now the gameplay has switched up a little bit. We now have a cover-based shooting segment. Uh, use the L and R buttons to get out of cover and square to duck back into cover. And we just shoot a bunch of stormtroopers. And of course, the targeting reticule is very small, and sometimes very difficult to see what you're aiming at. Also, you should note it should be noted that if you aim for the stormtroopers' heads, it won't count. You have to hit their torsos, so hit detection is pretty specific. And there's also load times. Okay, now here we go. So yeah, despite the fact that we're now you know ducking and shooting and stuff, the mechanics are still mostly the same. It's still mostly just the same, you know. Rail shooting, shoot stuff, FMV, blah. <laughs> and I keep ducking over and over to try and avoid everything. One thing about the scoring system does factor into is uh, you can actually get extra lives. So the score isn't just there just to be, hey, it's a score. So you can get extra lives at least in this game. Not that I don't think I died in easy mode, but in normal mode it is actually quite difficult unless you know exactly what you're doing. And I do sort of know what I'm doing in this game, but it's just that with the controls in this game, or in the PlayStation version, it's not very good, and you'll see later on. Uh, the shooting stuff here is not too bad, though, even with uh, the D-pad. And you can only use the D-pad in the PlayStation version because this came out in 95, and that was before the analog stick. And, and that was lovely. I couldn't even shoot the guy because of the sequence, and uh, I'm just tapping L and R here. You actually have to tap L and R twice to get out of cover in... Uh, in this part, when you're in the pillar. And, uh, hmm. Stormtroopers just fall and disintegrate instantly into, uh, FMV void. I don't know. I don't even know what that's supposed to be. It's like an electrified rail system, I think. There we go. I just got like 5,000 points and got an extra life. Okay, and we just hop over here, and obvious green screen is still obvious. Uh, one thing this game actually does have is is that the original costumes were actually from the movies and <laughs> wow them graphics huh with the floating jpeg hand there it's like playing dark forces all of a sudden which was also on playstation <laughs> wow i don't know which was worse the fact that he didn't notice them until he put his game boy down or the stormtroopers didn't notice them and oh look it's the millennium falcon i mean Corellian star there was only like one stormtrooper there, really. Well, it's a, it's a good thing this rookie pod knows how to fly a Corellian freighter. <laughs> That's one thing I always notice in the movies is that when with guys with laser blasters, they always just try and fire the ships, even though it's futile. It's like, what what difference does it make if you're trying to shoot it? Haha, <laughs> the stormtrooper said we're dead, and they only had twelve percent accuracy there. Okay, now with chapter three, uh, this is where the game kind of gets a little bit bad. So you're stuck in this view, and you have an FMV scrolling, and ah, the problem is, is with this control scheme here is, well, let me put it this way: Have you ever been uh, like out in the lake or something where you were either pulled? We're like in an inner tube or something, you got pulled behind by a boat, or say you were pulled behind by a snowmobile from a sled or something like that. Well, controlling these sequences is a lot like that, where you have like almost no control of where you're going, and you're pretty much at the mercy of the path of the video game. So this is what this is. Uh, this is extremely loose. It's very easy to get knocked into walls and shit. And, there's a, and they throw all sorts of stuff at you to try and, like, you know, make you take damage. And 
and it's very easy to get grinded up in walls. And see, they, they do shit, like, they make you tilt randomly and stuff. See, this is why FMV rail games like this pretty much died out, because they're not that fun, and I'm almost dead already. You see what I mean? I mean, yeah, it's it's kind of cool and nostalgic in some ways, I can understand that, but I didn't really grow up with these games. And I, I, but I can still understand why people would have fond memories of these games. But playing them now, they're not. They, these aren't very fun. I'm sorry, but they're not. And we go into the second part of the stage where look, the view is now changed. We can fire, but now uh, we're stuck in this view. And now we're getting attacked by stormtroopers and stuff. And uh, while this mode is mostly just to aim and shoot, you do have some control over where you're sort of going based on your uh, movement of the cursor there. And, and like I said from the first stage, the controls switch on you in this view. So you have to get adjusted to both, you know, from the third person view to the first person, which change the inverted controls on you. It's annoying. I mean, it looks kind of cool, I guess, but <laughs> there's not much else to this game other than that, other than these sequences. Though as much as I harp on this game, I probably will admit the PC version is probably better. The, it's mostly the controls I have issues with in, with this PlayStation version. Oh, one fun fact about this game though. Uh, the game uses an engine called the Insane Engine, which was made by LucasArts. Uh, this w engine was also used in Full Throttle. So, at least we have this game to thank for for Full Throttle at least. And I guess you could or guess you could say Full Throttle was a much better use of this engine's technology than this 7V crap. I'll just say that. Even though I never played Full Throttle. And, uh, oh look, this must be the exit because it's a straight shaft up into the surface. How convenient. Fox, you're okay! And yeah, with that, Rookie One escapes through impossible odds. How surprising. And that's the end of that stage. Or chapter. Hey, we got slightly better accuracy this time around. How about that? 